This is, I think, the most common question we're getting right now, unsurprisingly, um, but it's not just from the patients themselves or the individuals who've been diagnosed. The care caregivers are also coming to us with those questions because of the concern of, well, if I go back to work, I could potentially then expose my loved one who has a compromised immune system. So what protections do I have? And unfortunately, there isn't one great answer here. Uh, we recently just wrote a blog that's up on triagecancer.org that walks through all of the different options with some additional information. But briefly, if we're talking about the individual who's been diagnosed, the first step is to figure out what is the goal of the employee? So if it's to stay at work, then there are a couple of options. I would say, you know, if they've been telecommuting, can they request the reasonable accommodation to continue to do so? The law says that employers have to provide the reasonable accommodation unless it's an undue hardship or a direct threat. And that's a pretty high bar for the employer to have to meet. So if somebody's been successfully telecommuting thus far, the argument becomes a little harder for the employer to make that it's not possible to continue to telecommute. The challenge is for people who maybe were furloughed and now are going and have a job that can't be done via you know, distance work, what options are there then? Um, turns out there are actually are some depending on the work environment and the person's job. So can they wear a mask? Can they work in a singular office as opposed to the open floor plan? Can they work off hours? So sure, I'm still going to go into the office, but I'm going to do it when nobody else is there. Um, and I can, you know, wipe down my, my surfaces and, and be protected. Is there additional filtration equipment that can be installed and used? Um, so those are just some examples that we've we've been talking to, to callers about recently, um, but that reasonable accommodation piece is, is gonna be valuable for people who uh, want to stay at work. If the option is to take time off, there are some options. So, that, you know, is that employee eligible for any paid time off? Uh, that we're talking like sick time or vacation time. The challenge with that is sick time and vacation time is not job protected. So an employer could potentially make an employment decision like a demotion or letting somebody go if they're out on sick time or vacation time. So there are some job protected options. Uh, the new piece of legislation I was referring to is the Families First Act uh, and it did lots of things, but related to today, it created a paid sick leave option and uh, this, is, this is unique because the sick leave options we've had in the past are unpaid, like the FMLA. The challenge with Families First is that this paid sick leave is only available to individuals in limited circumstances. And it's gonna be for six reasons. For example, you've been exposed to COVID-19, um, you've been recommended to self-quarantine because of possible exposure. Uh, the challenge is that having a compromised immune system and being concerned about exposure doesn't qualify as one of those six reasons under Families First. And that's the position that a lot of our community is finding themselves in. Now, I will say some states have actually taken this a step further and said, you know, if a healthcare professional has recommended that you quarantine due to your compromised immune system, then you would be eligible for some benefits. But um, that's not going to be the case for everybody. Now, the Families First Act also created emergency FMLA leave, and this is for individuals who um, have to care for a child whose school has been closed or doesn't have um, the ability to uh, get childcare somewhere else. So that's, again, pretty narrow. Um, and that piece says they cannot work or telework. So if they have a job where they can telecommute, they're not gonna be eligible for that particular leave. So then that leaves us with the traditional FMLA, but the challenge with that is it's unpaid leave. 
And most of us can't go 12 weeks without any sort of income coming in. And outside of COVID, if somebody were to take FMLA, if they had access to a short-term disability policy, that could potentially kick in and provide some income. But the challenge right now is what we're seeing with most disability policies is they're saying just having a compromised immune system and being scared of or fearful of contracting COVID doesn't qu qualify as a disability and therefore we don't have to pay out. So it really puts individuals in this very challenging limbo situation um, with respect to keeping their job protected but maintaining some sort of income as well.